As a little girl, I looked at the world with awe. I had a lot of respect for the people around me. I felt small. I smelled non-significant. And I talked about this with my mom, and I asked her, what's my path? What is my goal in life? And she said, don't worry. You will find your path as long as you're happy, and as long as you do the things you like. And it doesn't matter what you do, sweeping floors, helping people. If you just like it and love it, you will help enough. And that would be your goal. And of course, I heard this sentence a lot in my, in my childhood, but I didn't get it right there. So it took me some time to understand what, what is happiness even, and what was I good at. During my studies of international business studies in Maastricht, I had one course and that struck me. It was a course about sustainability and energy solutions. I learned about how to use material when you're in business, how to make money, but also to understand what the impact and your footprint is when you make production. And then that struck me. I said, wow, this is amazing. We do a lot of things in business and we ruin our world. How is this possible? So I decided at that moment, I thought, no, when I'm in business, I'm going to do it a bit differently. We have to think of the next generation. Now I am a mother of two children, two and five. I am getting more firm in this, in this thought. In 2013, I was appointed CEO of our family business. And then I thought, yes, this is the moment. Now I can make an impact. We are in the construction, and our, our business is technical engineering. And what we do is we make uh, big buildings, such as this theater, but also hospitals, laboratories, places where they make food for children. So quite important spaces in our environment. And also, we use a lot of energy. We abuse the world. So in 2013, we said we have to make a bit of a change. So let's set strategy and make it like this. We only want to make zero emission and healthy environments. So we did. But this was more easily said than done. Because the people in our, our world, they said, we will never get this done. It's, it's really difficult, it's hard, my clients don't ask for it. But we had firm discussions in the company, and they said, no, this is the way we have to go. Because we have one Earth, we have a lot of generations before us, we have to make the difference. And we can. And of course, I told you, I was a little girl, I was shy, and maybe it could even be called a dreamer. What would be my position in this technical engineering company? Well, that's what I would like to give to you, some lessons I've learned, and maybe you can use them as well. One lesson is time. There's time. We're a family business, and we don't look at the world in financial gains in the short run. We would like a good product and have social impact in the long run. We think in generations. And this is really worthwhile, because also for me, I was quite young when I started, and I thought, yeah, I can be a CEO, of course, but Take time. You're not the best CEO in the first place. Take time. I'm here for now for five years, and I'm getting more confident. That's interesting. And also for the company, my brother, he's in innovation, and he says there's a lot of things happening. Uh, but don't worry, there are trains going every day, every time and again. So you have time to jump on the train. I don't know how many of you have the feeling they're always too late or they miss out on the newest gadgets and events and innovations. Take the advice of my brother. Just wait for the next train to come. But keep in mind, if this train is far away, you have to run faster to get there. So for a business, it's like maybe you're a bit later, we have to invest a little bit more. But then you're still on the train and a lot of things are possible. So time also adds something to our culture. Because if you give time to develop yourself in your products, or maybe what we've now uh, introduced last week, our safety culture, we think it's really important to be more safe. And the directors and me decided we have time. We don't want to make a program that changes our culture in three months. It doesn't work like that. We said we take time, we take more than three years to change our safety DNA. And this Perception of time gives also a lot of space in the heads of your people, and they, they feel more relaxed. 
The second subject is keep the goal in mind. Of course, you can read all about this in, in uh, management books, but what it means for me is also this thing gives me time, ease, and a lot of confidence. I would like to take you back to the sentence I just told you, that we only want to make sub, uh, zero emission and healthy environments. I actually had big discussions internally because I wanted to have a more circular, a more, even more green approach. But at that time, people in my company were not ready for that. I was too far ahead. And even though I tried to get the circular way of thinking into our strategy, uh, at a certain point in time, I thought, mm, maybe this is not the best way to convince people because they don't see it like I do. So maybe now it's better also for me and also for my credibility to enjoy what we've done so far. We are going in the green direction and circularity will take its time. And actually, so it happened. I kept the end goal in mind and I thought, okay, the next big moment in the company, I'm going to put circularity on the agenda again. And that was two years later when we had a management development program and there were 16 participants and one of the four strategic uh, subjects was circularity. And I was a bit surprised because my colleague directors, they didn't argue at all and they said, yeah, that's a good idea. So I thought, wow, that's a big step again. And it got a bit bigger, because two years later, there was a client and they told us, uh, well, you, uh, if you want to have this uh, order, you have to reuse 95% of all materials that are already in the building. So this was a big, big challenge. And then I thought, ha, the market is ready. Maybe now our people get ready. And last year, in 2018, we joined a circular, circular economy challenge here in Eindhoven. And now we are preparing for a modular, circular, thermal health uh, engineering um, solution for our clients. And then I got really excited and I thought, okay, just take time. I had the end goal of circularity and now we are there. This year our strategy is becoming redesigned a little bit again and now circularity is on the basis of this strategy. So end goal in in, keep your end goal in mind and take time. And as a last point, and this might sound maybe a bit strange in it from a technical engineering point of view, but intuition is also very important for me. When I was appointed the CEO, I was actually yeah, quite nervous or maybe uh, insecure about it. And we had a lot of talks with our board of directors. And they talked to me and my brother, we are of the same generation. And they, were, they said, well, you can handle this together. It's okay, we give you trust. And then I thought, okay, but I don't see it like that. So I was a bit insecure again. And then at one day, I just sat down at my kitchen table. I got a pen and paper and I was thinking. And I said, I only think of the things I don't have. I don't have experience yeah, in the construction field. I was young, 33 years old. The biggest team I've ever had led was four people, not 800. So. Uh, big responsibilities, but I did want to get the challenge done because I really wanted to do the job, but I was finding out what would be my assets and what would be my added value. So I just wrote down some things like, okay, I have humor, I can put things into perspective, uh, I don't take, think a lot of things seriously, but I, I'm firm, I want to get my call, goals done, I have a female touch, I have intuition, and then actually I stopped writing because intuition, what's this? And it really struck me because I felt it was good. And that also made me happy <laughs> because I did have some things to bring to the table. So I was getting more confident. And the most interesting thing that happened, within two weeks I received an email with the subject, how to make your intuition better. And then I thought, okay, I just immediately subscribed. <laughs> and within two days, I was doing this course about intuition. I was in a room with people. And I was actually yeah, doing all kinds of uh, uh, yeah, skills. And I, I learned a lot of things. But I also realized that most of those uh, tricks, they were uh, tricks, skills, they were not new to me. I already learned them when I was 10 year old. Um, because my mom, as I already told you, we had a lot of discussion, but she was also quite spiritual. And it's quite interesting that I lost sight of that part. And now I do use it a lot. 
And I would like to share one uh, thing I would I'm, I'm doing almost every day, because there's a lot of subjects uh, passing my head, mostly, during a day. And this, uh, this uh, oefening <laughs> helps me a lot. I always close my eyes, I sit on a uh, chair, and I inhale, and I exhale, exhaling all negative thoughts, black. Inhaling good thoughts, gold. And if I do this quietly, I get in a mode where my brain is getting more at ease. And, as a little child we learned, little ants start crawling on your head. I see people. And it really helps. Also before this talk, I was quite nervous. I'm now enjoying it, by the way. <laughs> But then also I got in this mode and I imagined how it would end up. And I also do this with very important business uh, discussions or maybe if we have to, uh, uh, want to have order or if we have problems with our clients. And it really helps me to be at ease, confident and confident also in the outcome. Keep the end goal in mind. Another example of intuition is also for me that intuition is about trust. Trusting yourself, but maybe more importantly, also trusting the people you work with. I firmly believe in, in, in um, the fact that people can do their job. They are the professionals. And we, at higher management, well, we have to give direction. That's our task. But professionals, they have to do their job. And they have to do it right and with a lot of spirit and a lot of fun. I would like to share one example of one of our colleagues and that really shows that this guy is not just doing the job. He loves his job and he could do it with us. There's one client here in Holland and they have the biggest water fountain of Europe. Maybe you know it. With a lot of nice lights and, and uh, excitement and music. It's our responsible, uh, responsibility that this fountain works every day. And one of our mechanics works there on the uh, location every day. And of course, fountains are all about water. But this specific showpiece also has eight fire jets. And those were very special and unusual. But the fire jets didn't work. So what did my colleague? He went home. He started talking to his 16-year-old son. He took the nozzle and they got Lego blocks. They just started playing. And at the end of the night, they had a was nozzle that was working. So the next day he went to work and he said, dear client, I have the answer. This is how it should work. And I really love this example because I didn't ask the guy to do this. He just wanted to do this. He was at the right spot. That was his path. And I love it because this guy is very shy, but I always share his story because it has to be told. So. There were some lessons I have learned. I hope you can do something with them as well. Keep in mind, time, there's always time. Take a decision when to want to enter the train. And when to, you keep the end goal in mind, of course, you don't win every battle, but you might win the war. You will win the war. And also about your intuition, try to use it. If you feel something and you think, ah, this is right, do it. Sometimes you might not have the words. For me, in the first year, it was quite difficult because I had one decision and I said, this is the way. And my direct colleagues they didn't understand me. I said, I'm sorry, I cannot explain, but this is how we're going to do it. It took half a year before they understood what I meant. But they gave me trust. So that's important as well. Find people around you that give you trust, that who you can trust, and so you can find your intuition. And maybe you'll find your ends as well. Thank you.